Hello everybody, this is Chief on INH Photography again. And right now we are at our dark room. Well, to be exact, it's film development bathroom. And today we're gonna talk about how to develop black and white film at home in a tiny bathroom. And first, in order to be super serious, I'm gonna put my lab coat on. After I get my lab coat, we're gonna first talk about what kind of chemical do you need for black and white film developing. First, for most, the most important one is the developer. <laughs> and next is the stop bath. Then the fixer, and you probably need the wet agent after everything's done. I have to point out that most of the chemical don't come pre-mixed of stock so you have to mix your chemical and some chemical like Kodak B76 developer they come with a powder bag so you have to mix them with water I recommend some cylinder like this is pretty handy this is a uh, one liter a hundred milliliter and here is two liter uh, cylinder is quite helpful. I have and moreover for D76, they come with one one gallon dose with the powder. You have to mix one time with one gallon water because the compound here is specially designed for one gallon use. You can't wait it out half of the D76 bag mixed with two liter water. It's, I might do some tiny tricks give you different results so I do recommend if you get one gallon bag of chemical get one gallon bottle and mix them one time to get the best result <coughs> and some chemical give you liquid bottle like this um, ill for rapid fixer and they you have to read the model um, and you have to read the label it says five liter and mix with one to four ratio which means 200 milliliter of fixer 800 milliliter of water then you get yourself one liter worth of fixer and then put in one of those one liter bottle you get yourself a fixer <clears throat> same thing with the stop bath i use it's it mix ratio is one to 19 like 50 milliliter of stop bath and fill the rest of one liter bottle with water then it's done and one more thing with chemical preparing eye protection is very important I'm not saying all the photochemicals are deadliest chemical gonna get yourself killed but eye protection is still kind of important you don't want have um, chemical into your eye which can cause itchy and some, sometimes severe problem because eye is most delicate part so if you're not wearing glasses like me a pair of chemical goggle is well recommended even though if you wear glasses goggles still quite useful in the mixing because chemicals can still get through from the side so in order to get the film out of your cassette you need one of those bottle opener to open up the film cassette like this so this is a exposed cassette so I'm not gonna open it in the daylight but after you open up your cassette you will get a roll of film pretty much like this then you want to roll the film into the reel on the right my hand here so please remember you have to do everything from here in the dark bag instead of in the daytime however we can't film in the dark bag so we're gonna film it right here so first off right after you get your film after the cassette you will get a lead 
like this. So you have to cut the lead out to expose this horizontal line to get into the reel. Otherwise, this will be kind of hard to reel the film into the reel. This particular one has film intakes here. However, in the dark, you may um, con get confused and think this is the end. Then you try to put film in here, which is impossible. Then you get frustrated and sweaty and panic. So a little trick is you try to feel at the notch here, this um, intake line you can feel then, oh, this is the right side. Then you have your film ready. Gently insert a little bit of film into the notch here. Remember, your hand has to be oil free in order to protect the film. So, no fries before any developing. Then, for me, I think a uh, little bit put, pull the film forward after the film it's, uh, has a certain length over the notch here just twisted the film reel and this some automatic loading system will guide you through all the way to the end now you will find a tiny cylinder or reel at the end of the film from the cassette. You can either pull that off um, from the tape or you just cut at the end. Then you load your film into the reel. But it's not done yet. Remember the basket and this cylinder thing? Put them right through and put it in the tank and put the cover on. Now you are 100% light sealed. Then you can get the cylinder or the tank out of your dog bag and ready to pull the chemical in. Before you open the cassette, make sure the dog bag is nice and tight at the end. And leave your small watch or any kind of watch that will make light out of the dark bag it will be really horrible if you accidentally expose the film and once you open up your cassette never ever pull your arm out of the dark bag because your arm is actually part of the seal in dark bag so if you pull out of your arm out of the bag it will create a, a hole and the hole means light into the bag and expose your film. However, if you want to take a break, then please put the film into the can, oh sorry, into the tank or can and put the cover on to create a light seal. Then pull out your arm out of your bag and take a break if you're frustrated. Once floated the film, then we move to the chemicals. Gloves, well, are recommended, but not necessary. But this time, in order to look serious, I'm gonna wear gloves. There's another piece is essential for the developing, is the tank lid when we do the agitation to mix the chemical, we do need this. So the first step, is pre-wash. It's not a hundred percent necessary but it's quite useful to wet the film a little bit in order to let the film surface 
um, contact with the developer a little bit better. It won't take long, just take 30 seconds to one minute, that's enough. Then, importantly, drink the water as clean as possible because the water, the more water left, it will influence the concentration of the developer a little bit more. Then we pull off the big gun D76 developer. So according to the um, codec, you need uh, developed um, HP5 and Triax 6 minutes and 45 seconds in D76 at 20 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Therefore, temperature is quite important. We need one of those digital thermometer. It's 20 degrees Celsius, exactly. Which means we don't need to do any tricks to the developer before we pull them in, just pull from the bucket. If the temperature is slightly lower than you want, then pull the developer into the cylinder first, then have a big hot pot in your sink and just gently warm up by the hot water to 20 degrees Celsius-ish. If it's too cold, do the opposite. Get some ice from the fridge into the sink and cool it down a little bit to 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature is very important to go as close as possible to 20 degrees Celsius within around one degree difference because the, those chemical is specifically designed to work for certain time at a certain temperature. If it's like really hot, like 25, you either develop shorter time or cool it down a little bit. The 20 degrees Celsius is what the best temperature for the D76. So we just stick with 20 degrees Celsius at this moment. After the pre-wash, <clears throat> set up the timer. I use this um, super cheap digital kitchen timer from Amazon, I guess. I've got what I bought, but uh, to six minutes and set the timer to six minutes and 45 seconds. Then we pull the developer in. and the starter timer. For the first 10 seconds, you want to use the um, agitation spoke come with from the tank to gently spin it around 10 seconds. And then you put the cover up. Agitate the tank every 30 seconds for four to five time and tap on the counter. The reason why you want to tap at the counter is to minimize the um, bubble next to the film. So a little bit of shake gonna get rid of the bubbles on the film and open the lid a little bit to let the gas out. The reason why you want to do the agitation because the reason you want to do the agitation because um, you want the fresh developer have contact with the film surface. So after every 30, sec 30 seconds, the developer is running out. Then a little bit gentle flip four time four or five times, give the new developer onto the film and tap off the bubble. The more the greener your 
film is because there's more reaction on the surface of the film. However, for stent developing, which requires no agitation at all, give you super fine grain. So what the developer do is react with the film and transport the part of film that exposed by the light into the silver. Then in the fixer step, we can wash out the rest of the unexposed part, get the transparent gel that is the basic film base. Then we can get a proper image, the contrast between exposed part and unexposed part. So right now, 30 seconds to go, we have to prepare to dump the developer. Developer is not reusable, so we have to um, pull them into the drain. So when you pull your developer into the drain, you better have a running water and just gently pull them out to expose them. <coughs> so, and the next step is the stop bath, which usually require one minute to two minute ish and same agitation as the developer. And what does the stop bath do is stop and remove all the developer that left in the tank. Because first off, you don't need the developer anymore in the film process. And second, when you mix developer and the fixer together, it will be very, very bad gas and the toxic stuff comes out. You really want that, you may get yourself killed potentially and really bad for the uh, house. So you have to remove the developer um, before you pull the fixer in. So right now it's around one minute and 30 seconds mark. We're ready to pull the stop bath out. And the stop bath is actually reusable. So get yourself a funnel and pull the stop bath back to the bottle. Usually stop bass has really really long lifespan if you store them correctly and you can use them over and over again until they change the color. It's, if you remember your high school chemistry class, uh, class correctly, the pH, there's a magic chemical that can attack, detect pH. So if the pH of the stop bath changed, the color of the stop bath will also change. At that time you realize your stop bath isn't working anymore. Then you, it's the time to have your new stop bath. After the stop bath, it's time for the fixer. Fixer also called um, as bleach. So what fixer do is remove all the unexposed part on a film to transparent and leave all the exposed film exposed part of the film alone to create a contrast for a fixer this particular one is running around six to seven minutes each and you also need to do the same agitation for the fixer And moreover, you can reuse the fixer, but it has much shorter lifespan compared to the stop bath. So usually like one liter of fixer, like this one, usually can good run for 10 to 15 rows. So it's better have a, a counter in your mind, or usually have a setup schedule to replace the fixer because it's a very essential part of film developing. And right now we recycle the fixer because for this particular bottle, I only have um, developed around five rows ish. So still quite like seven, eight rows left in the life of this bottle. And after the fixer, since you wash all the light sensitive chemical out of the film, you can feel free to open up the lid. 
Next step is um, wash our film because since <coughs> there's still some chemical left, you really won't wash all the chemical out, otherwise it will create stain on your film. Usually the after wash costs around 8 to two, 10 minutes. So during this period, you can do something to make the dark room or your film processing room a little bit better to prepare the film drying and get less dust on a film. The first off, I will turn on this R2D2 humidifier to create um, more humid environment in the dark room because those water particles gonna stuck with those dust particles and combine them to make the free flying dust a bit less in the room therefore less dust in the room and one more thing is very important I will put a remote small heater in a room and plug it in to raise the room temperature just a little bit and make the film dry better and we close the door and let the temperature in the room rise yeah. now after eight minutes we turn off the water and dump all the water out of the tank and ready for the last chemical it's called wetting agent so what wetting agent do is to create a special layer in front in the in front of the film to help the water roll off much quicker on a rack you just need a little bit for the flow in the tank and the recommended volume is 1 to 200 ratio it's really really hard to mix them properly you have to use this kind of small graduate cylinder which really isn't worth the time you just have to do what I do, just add a little bit and let it soak a little bit and shake and ready to um, put them on the roll. Before you grab your roll out of the film tank, the most important thing is turn off the heater because the heater creates uh, the airflow that will create a lot of dust flying around then you move to the rack we use a random rack that designed for hanging clothes to hang the film and we have a cardboard there to stop all the dripping then you start the first one just grab the lid out of the roll and let it roll down for the with the help of the gravity and clamp the top and grab some bathroom tissue or any tissue you have and another clips clip at the bottom of the film so you can wait on the film get a nice and straight dry film when they're dry and do the same with the second one finally use the squish to gently wipe the water out of film to make them dry better and admire your work.